I've spent years building up my smart home, adding lights, switches, locks, cameras, water sensors, motion sensors, voice assistants, and more. And that's not including the number of different home automation platforms I've used and tested. In that time, I've crafted scenes and modes to cover everything from automatically adjusting the house's temperature based on where we are, to running my vacuum cleaner automatically if nobody's home. But on most of my home automation videos, I get questions, <laughs> well, more like statements, asking why do we even need smart homes? Comments along the lines of, I'm perfectly fine walking across the room to flip a switch. Or I think it's technology for the sake of technology rather than something that's genuinely useful. You'll never hear me argue that everyone should build out a smart home. But I do think we should take a look at some of the big reasons why so many of us do it. And an extremely compelling reason that tends to get overlooked. Before I dive in, take a moment and hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. I'm Matt Farrell. Welcome to Undecided. This video isn't meant to try to convince anybody to jump on board the smart home train, but I'm just hoping that this illuminates some of the reasons why smart homes are so compelling to a lot of us. The problem is that most smart home makers create advertising that highlights the eye candy aspect of smart homes. Take this Philips Hue commercial for instance. Four times in the video they show people using their phone to control the lights. Only once do they show an automation with the motion sensor turning on the hallway lights. Who wants to use their smartphone to control everything in your home? I sure don't. But what gets me excited for smart homes is usually not showcasing the advertising, which is why I think a lot of the benefits get overlooked. The real magic of smart homes is automations. Things that happen automatically in your house without having to do anything yourself. And I'll put good money on the fact that pretty much everybody out there has automation already in their home. How many people out there have some kind of schedule controlled home thermostat? It's the most basic of automations, but it's still automated. You program in exactly what you want your house temperature to be during the day while you're out and during the evening while you're home. Take that functionality and layer in the ability to have things in your home coordinate. Instead of needing a schedule to change your home's heating and cooling cycles, it can use your phone to know if you're home or not, or use motion sensors to know if the house is empty or not. Program in what lights you want to turn on when the house detects that you're within a certain range. Not being limited to a specific schedule and to have devices that work together gives you one button control for multiple things too. I know I just criticized Philips Hue for focusing on the eye candy, but a good example is tying lights to a Logitech Harmony remote. Activate the watch a movie activity and your TV turns on, switches to the correct input, and your living room lights change to a pre-configured light level. One button push. And it's not that you can't go around and turn on all the lamps and use multiple remotes to turn on your TV, sound system, and media player by yourself. But this is one simple button press. You also aren't limited to where your light switches are wired in. You can add other wireless switches in locations that are better located for how you use your room. For me in my bedroom, I have a wall switch that turns our floor lamp on and off. But I also have a small button on each of our nightstands that can turn on either just the nightstand or all lights in the bedroom. This has proven useful many times. Have a room where you'd like to add another switch by a second door, but don't want to hire an electrician to wire in a new box? Just add a wireless switch. Rearranged your room? No problem. Just move the switch to a better location. Security cameras are nothing new, but being able to tie those security cameras into home automations is very powerful. As I mentioned before, you can have cameras automatically turn on and off depending on who's home or not. If the house is empty, the security cameras turn on and record anything if motion is detected. If someone comes home, they turn off for privacy. Then turn them back on for security when you're asleep at night. If the cameras detect motion, have lights automatically turn on and send notifications on your phone. But security is more than just trying to ward off thieves. It can be just about protecting your home and minimizing the damage from things like a leaky water heater. A while back, I had a water heater fail on me and leak all over my basement. We didn't catch the leak until the water had spread quite far into the finished basement. After that happened, I picked up two water sensors that I placed around the water heater and condensate pump. If water is detected, it sends me a notification on my phone and turns off the HVAC system, which is right next to the water heater. 
You can even have it flashlights around the house to draw attention, and if you have a smart home speaker, read out a warning message. Water leak has been detected. For me, this is a big one. For the biggest bang for your buck, a smart thermostat is going to recoup the costs pretty quickly. EKB has reported users saving more than 23% on their heating and cooling bills. Nest did a study that showed 10 to 12% savings on heating and 15% savings on cooling, which comes in at around $131 to $145 in savings a year. We saw an improvement in our energy after getting an EKB installed. EKB actually makes saving energy a little game-like in their interface by showing how you rank against other EKB users in your area. Over the past couple of years, I've made adjustments to my system temps and settings, and I've gotten my home into the top 28% most energy efficient homes in my area. Part of the way I did this was by not only using the built-in features of the EKB, but tying it into my broader smart home. When my wife and I are gone, the house automatically switches into away mode. And since I work from home, there's not a good set schedule that I follow for being home and away. This lets the house take care of itself and I don't have to think about it. You can also get things like a sense energy monitor in your home. Track your energy usage across your entire house and individual devices that it's been able to detect. Once sense has been able to detect and identify a device, you can tie that device's energy usage into your home automations. Sense can send you alerts if a non-smart home device turns on and off as well as trigger other automations in your house. And finally, this is a smaller item, but have you ever forgotten to turn off a light when you leave home? <laughs> well, you can have your home make sure everything, including lights, space heaters, and more are turned off when everyone has left. It's not gonna save you big bucks on energy, but every bit helps. This brings me to the final, very compelling reason that tends to get overlooked. This is something that in hindsight seems so obvious to me, but it hadn't crossed my mind until one of you reached out and brought this to my attention. Steve commented on one of my videos that his son, who has cerebral palsy, is benefiting from his smart home setup. One of the biggest things that helped his son is using a voice assistant like Alexa. Being able to control the Logic Harmony Hub with his voice has allowed him to turn on and off the TV, change inputs and change channels. He can also turn on and off the lights in his room on his own. It's given his son some independence back and he no longer has to call on anyone else for things like changing the channels for him. And if you continue to branch out from there, you can see the other possibilities. For instance, smart blinds are shades on windows that you can control with the push of a button or a simple voice assistant phrase. Not everyone can reach a cord or have the needed strength to pull up heavy blinds. Most of the major smart home brands focus their marketing on smart home conveniences and not enough on these kinds of solutions. A handful of companies like Control 4 are making some efforts in that direction though. They've highlighted how their smart home system can benefit a family with an autistic child. Or Vivint highlighting how a smart home can help keep tabs on a nonverbal child who likes to wander. The parents added sensors on doors and windows to be alerted immediately if their son climbed over the gate and tried to open one. This allowed them to give their son less direct supervision, which builds confidence, but the smart home additions kept him safe and gave them peace of mind. This kind of marketing is something I'd like to see more companies do as well. For families with special needs, whether it's caring for an elderly parent, a child with cerebral palsy or autism, or if it's you yourself that needs the extra help, smart homes aren't just about convenience and security. Accessibility and independence is a key part of the story. In the past, smart home systems were extremely expensive, but today they're more affordable than ever. You can pick up smart outlets and bulbs for less than $10. Add in locks, cameras, thermostats, and you've got the start of a very capable smart home. You can build out automations that mean you never have to use a smartphone to control anything in your house. Things just automatically happen depending on what you're doing. And in the case of someone with special needs, you can gain back a level of independence in your life. Now, will this convince the folks that don't understand smart homes to buy in? Probably not, and it doesn't have to but hopefully it will help explain why a lot of us are going all in on adding smarts to our homes. So are you all in on smart homes? Or do you still have no interest in it for yourself? Jump into the comments and let me know. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends because it really does help the channel. There's some other ways that you can support the channel too. Check out my SFSF shop for some cool Tesla, SpaceX, science and undecided shirts. There's also other links in the description for some great Tesla accessories and discounts. And as always, an extra big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. Your support really is making these videos possible and giving me some great topic ideas. 
Be sure to check out my Patreon page for additional details about joining the crew. If you haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell to get alerts when I post new videos. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.